What's up everybody? This is Ryan here, and you're watching another episode of Programming WTF. So in today's episode, I wanted to talk about the concept of the problem domain of an application or of an information system in general, which could even apply to a human brain. So in a general sense, an information system's purpose is to store and manipulate information. So when I say information system, assume I'm saying computer, pretty much synonymous. So in order to achieve this, the computer must model or represent this information as stored variables, which can be inputted and output into the computer's memory. So when we build a computer program, a big part of our job, and you've already done this if you've written any programs, is telling the computer what information it will need to represent as variables. Now, if you've ever been on the internet, you should know firsthand that there's nearly an infinite supply of information out there, and depending on what you're looking for, and that's a key point, is what you are looking for, 99.99999, etc. percent of the information you will find is either useless, irrelevant, or deliberately misleading. So therefore, when we make a program, our goal is to avoid storing any useless information because that'll just take up extra memory space, which does have a finite value. Uh, however, if we leave out vital, important information, uh, then we won't actually have our application function the way it is supposed to. So that's kind of the other side of the coin, uh, is that we need kind of the right information. So you're going to hear many different explanations of the term problem domain, which use lots of big words. Uh, fortunately for you, I didn't go to school for this stuff, and I can only explain what it means to me based on several thousand hours of writing programs. Uh, so here is kind of my basic definition of the problem domain. So, information which a program must store in order to fulfill its purpose. Emphasis being on must. So again, we're talking about leaving out anything we don't need, but making sure we have everything we do need. Now, um, what I wanted to do next is kind of explain how we actually go about designing this problem domain or uh, capturing it in the program. So in a perfect world, every time we were about to begin writing a program, we would know exactly what the problem domain looks like. We would know exactly what we need, what we don't need. Now. In reality, we almost never know the exact pro problem domain when we begin to build the application. Uh, sometimes we do uh, if it's a very, very simple application or if you have a lot of experience. But for the most part, you're not going to get it exactly correct the first time. Fortunately for us, us humans are actually quite good at building our own models for these types of things. So the only course of action left is to basically, when you're starting to build an application, you just make an educated guess. You, you make assumptions and kind of go from there. So for example, uh, suppose I'm starting to build a note-taking program, like Space Notes down in the description box below. Now this program is really easy conceptually speaking, the idea behind it, a note-taking application. Because conceptually speaking, a note, which is what we want to represent as our problem domain, uh, could actually be represented simply as just a string of characters. So since uh, we would typically talk about the contents of a note in the English language, then, oops, I've decided to call uh, the contents, the actual collection of characters, which we consider the note, as this variable here, string contents. Now this is just pseudocode, it's not any specific language, uh, it's really just some generic data model. Um, so anyways, yeah, we have the contents of the note. So based on a very simple application idea, which is just a note-taking app, we could actually stop there and create a functioning application because realistically the only thing we absolutely need to store in order to have a working note-taking working note -taking application is the contents of each note. However, I've added a couple extra things here just for some pseudocode examples, uh, such as a date, 
object, whatever that is, which tells us when the note was created, and a string uh, object uh, or variable, which uh, contains the ID of the user who created the note. So ultimately speaking, the actual information you decide to incorporate or include in your problem domain, in your application, is up to you as the programmer. So the more specific you are with your problem domain or with the idea of your application, uh, typically speaking, the more specific you'll have to be with the information that you need to include. So all I'm trying to get at here is that there is a bit of a science behind it, but also it depends a lot on what the application does. So hopefully that's relatively clear. The last point I'd like to make is that variables in the problem domain have many different characteristics which we can pay attention to and use that for optimization. Uh, so for example, I know it's not super clear here, but what this says is information can be unchanging or changing. Tell the computer. So what I'm saying here is when you examine the problem domain, there's a good chance that some parts of the problem domain will never change and some parts will change. So all I'm pointing to here is depending on your platform, what language you're writing in, there's very often constructs which you can use for things that don't change. So for example, in Java or Kotlin, or I believe also C Sharp, uh, we have the final keyword, uh, or there's also static is another concept. And the reason why we might want to do that is if we have something that never changes, uh, it doesn't make sense to uh, even have the possibility of changing it or to have to recreate it every time it is accessed by some part of the program at runtime. Instead, what, what most uh, modern computers do is they'll have like a special space in memory. Uh, this could be virtually done, but they'll have a special partitioned area of memory for these constant values that don't change throughout the course of the application. Uh, so that's uh, kind of an introduction to the problem domain. Hopefully that was relatively useful. And what I wanted to get at here is if you're just about to start designing a program and you're not sure where to start, your primary goal is first you need to figure out what your application does. So for example, I want an application or program that stores notes. Okay, from there we say, hmm, I will probably need a conceptual note object. From there you kind of ask the question, okay, well, based on what my application needs to do, what information does this note model have to possess? That's going to change again, depending on what your application uh, is going to do eventually. And of course, the last point is that typically speaking, some parts of the problem domain will be unchanging. So things like uh, the value of pi is another good example. And for those, in, for those things in particular, we can save some memory space and increase the efficiency of our applications simply by using the constructs in our programming languages, which are especially for these unchanging immutable values.